This thesis uh, was about embedded visual perception for autonomous lawn mowers using deep neural networks for semantic segmentation. And um, the main question was, can, can grass mowing currently be automated? And it actually can, because we have uh, the private lawns where we have these uh, uh, semi-automatic uh, uh, little uh, lawn mowers. This is just driving within a uh, limited uh, perimeter wire set up by uh, some maintenance. Uh, in the private lawn, opposed to, to public parks, you have control over the environment. You know every object that's there and you can uh, tell your kids not to go out and play. But in public parks, there's a lot of, um, of obstacles that are dynamic that you can't control. In public parks, there are benches, there are people playing, there are, uh, there are different scenarios which you simply can't, uh, can't foresee. There's also the case of uh, roadside areas where uh, safety is a major issue uh, due to large transportation vehicles and stuff like that. We choose to focus on public parks um, where um, it's very important for us to know the scene. Uh, so scene perception and obstacle uh, detection is very important in this case. Yes. Right now there are uh, some products already on the market. There is the Auto Turf from Cities, uh, and there is uh, Turflinks F315. These models are both uh, fully autonomous and can uh, drive on uh, golf turfs, but they rely on LiDAR sensors, GPS sensors, and bumpers. So as the Auto Turf has a bumper in approximately this height, then everything below it, uh, it doesn't see or in any way uh, measure. So this would be a problem. Someone lying there, uh, music in his ears, and he will simply get uh, get shredded to pieces. Uh, it's also a problem if uh, ponds and stuff like that get exploded, because you ha don't have any scene perception. You have uh, a GPS signal that tells you where you are, but you don't know if the surroundings change. Uh, and lighters can't really uh, detect uh, water flowing, and it will destroy the scene to drive it. Yes, so we want to improve this solution by using RGB cameras. So the basic uh, method is RGB detection. It's very fast. Uh, so you can detect obstacles such as uh, objects such as road, cell uh, belt, field, but you don't know the exact location by the boundary box. Uh, anything not rectangular is not really well defined. To solve this problem, we suggest to use semantic segmentation to classify every single pixel in the RGB image, such as this example. So we guess it's classified to trees, turtles, animals, fences, do something like this. So this is the input and this is the output from the CNN. Yes. And we mainly focus on the Pascal context uh, data set with 60 classes. It's got uh, optical optics uh, classes and scene classes, such as road, uh, grass, and so on. Yes. Um, see if we want to do it on the, the lower, we have to do it in an embedded implementation. We suggest to do it on the immediate JSON 6.1, uh, which supports cool accelerated implementations. Um, it puts a requirement on memory usage, 45 months, and we have to show come up with the final CNN which allows for a minimum forward wall to to adapt to dynamic changes. Yes, so at first we did a little study, then we did image classification analysis on existing networks, then investigating semantic segmentation solutions, model optimization of the final models, and embedded implementation on the board. So initial based on the mineral turf, we wanted to focus on one by one conversion, decompression, asymmetric field decomposition, procedural learning, maximization, and dynamic conversions. These are all related to either higher accuracy or faster inference. So, the main results from the image classification analysis is these comparisons of the most popular networks. Um, we'll go into detail later in the presentation. Similarly, we have the analysis of each layer in the network. 
So we can find out what layers take what, what time. Mm -hmm. yes. We do the same uh, in semantic segmentation, where we uh, start off by a simple model, a simple structure, and then expand it in different directions to see how it affects the, both uh, the inference time and memory, and also uh, compare it to the pixel accuracy from training these networks uh, on Pascal context. Um, an example of the output is, uh, is this. So it's a simple network, it's not uh, meant for the uh, final solution, but it still does a pretty good job in segmenting. Um, we see that using dilation, we get uh, some, some uh, artifacts of uh, like dotted uh, artifacts on the image. Um, we choose to, to go with a deep and narrow residual solution, which I, uh, the small thing. So after fixing all these measurements, we define the final structure for the CNN to be inferred in scale. But we want to optimize this model in, case of, in terms of data input, uh, uh, multi-class structures, and so on. So we focus on, we investigate trend learning, class merging, just data sets, AD2K versus SQL context, multi-class structures, and mixed input. And this is an example of the final one of the final models. So you have an image from the park and you get a segmented output with the class uh, of breeze ground building super. And on the uh, development platform using a DTX 1080, we get an FPS of approximately 50 centimeters. It's quite high. Um, and we get a, a pixel accuracy of about 66. We have a small demonstration in the park. Mm -hmm. uh, the frame rate is the original frame rate of the video. Um, and the rest is blue, three is uh, red, and then so on. So here you can watch the results. You can see motion aspects on the input image, which results in all these. Uh, So when we did it on the embedded platform, we uh, we searched for ways to, to optimize it to, to an embedded platform. So we used the cafe branch which um, which supported floating point sixteen to, to see if this uh, this could uh, lead to a, a higher uh, frame rate. And it did, uh, but not as much as we thought it would. <laughs> um, we achieved a frame rate of uh, eight point forty seven with our fastest model and uh, six point nineteen frames per second with uh, the source. So all the models are within uh, uh, meets the requirements of four point four. So we can we can um, uh, yeah it, it takes a an image every yeah we have an example here mm -hmm. which shows uh, visually how it would look if uh, if uh, frame rate of 6.19 is used. Mm -hmm. yes. So again, as before, there's uh, some warping of the image, there's uh, extra stabilization. You see them building it the way it's a bit. There's some light blue there, this is not on... The, the, li the light blue is mountain. And okay. mountain is a, is a class that we normally just uh, discard and okay. then we will look for the second best class. Because mm -hmm. it's not related to parks anyway. It's not blue at all. Again, in the direction where it, it gets out. Um, you see that it detects the person that was the. Uh, what's it called? The. 
together. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the bottom of the legs were actually animal, which is not good. When the limbs are still, you see a much uh, more stable uh, detection mm -hmm. of classification. Yes, so we have seen a few disadvantages of using the RGB cameras. Um, we have a low visibility uh, in case of direct sunlight, and also in case of fog, and other environmental issues. Um, and also the motion blur when we're actually driving around uh, most of the performance. So you cannot use a very cheap camera. With, uh, uh, and distance to the objects are very hard to determine. You have to do a kind of mapping from the fixed location to an estimate. And uh, on the video, there's a lot of flickering, so you, you would have to do a post processing of the output, some kind of uh, probability mapping of the path to, to make it more reliable. Yes, so is it possible to implement scene perception on the embedded platform of the one? And it is. Uh, using one more one solution, we can fit it in the memory of the one, and we can decrease the number of computations to make it actual real time. Additionally, um, it can analyze the, the scene. It can see grass, trees, buildings, and those effects, also water. And it, uh, but it does require the processing. Yeah. So there's uh, ways that we can optimize this. Uh, so I'll do a few quick um, Some of the, um, uh, some parts of the network may be too large. The pre uh, the pre process part of the network is is maybe too wide, I guess. Um, the number of microtexts before the first pooling layer can be uh, lowered, so we uh, can downscale at an earlier point. Um, which is um, because in the beginning the, the in the beginning the most of the time is used. Then we can optimize the accuracy by using data aggregation. Or we can uh, use more case specific MSNFs. Yes. Also, uh, Pascal Context has a large range of um, outdoor images, but also a, large, uh, a lot of indoor images with <coughs> furniture and lights and things like that. So, a good thing would be to combine multiple classification datasets and take the case relevant images and then combine the classes to make a, a super dataset. Also, maybe you could use a native uh, low resolution output from the CNN to increase the computation cost of the post by a large factor. And we could use the end to end trainable post processing method by adding recurrent layers within the network. We can train the, the we can train them to, to use the uh, temporal. And we have a live demonstration as well mm -hmm. of running the T1 on the MRI. So yeah, that was all, all my point why the camera is on. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. It doesn't record. <laughs> yeah, there is. So the same colors as before I used, so the magenta is the people. Uh, the green one is plants. The red one adjusted to a red in a, in a just short moment. And it was uh, that was tree, so it may look a bit like a tree. Uh, I'm mostly plants. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Okay. Yes. So the uh, the uh, the frame rate is uh, higher here than we measured. That's because this implementation is made in Python as opposed to as opposed to C plus plus. And what's the numbers? What is the numbers? That's uh, millis uh, seconds per frame. That uh, the last one. That's uh, that's the processing time. Okay. And the on two two, it's uh, approximately five. Then. Uh, on two would be five. Yes. yes. Uh, four point four. And this one is the actual frame rate of uh, the image, because there's also a time where you, where for 
crossing the things. Yes. Furthermore, this is building height 32, not 16, which is uh, used here. The L2 detects the uh, cloud. So how, how small objects it can detect? Well, we uh, we used uh, a, a version of the, the networks that are actually made for not detecting very small objects. Okay. Um, so this is what what we call uh, the 18 double refine. So using residual pooling, we we want to make more. Is it uh, sturdy? The green is that. What is that? Grass? It's uh, indoor grass. furniture. Furniture. Indoor furniture. Indoor yeah. furniture. Obstacles. Obstacles. Yeah. It's very hard to exclude classes from the answer. Mm -hmm. So all these different indoor obstacles, such as uh, yeah. furniture, chair, all combined into one mm -hmm. indoor furniture class. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, sir. Yeah. 